<laughs> Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. <clears throat> We're here to um, share the experience of um, our lives and the miracles that have occurred um, for us and to us uh, in awakening us to the passion that is strong within us, a call that was revealed and is revealing itself even further. Um, we'll share our stories. I'll ask Marie a few questions and she'll do the same for me. And um, we'll, we'll just share what we know because it's, it's been deep for us and it continues to go deeper. Yeah, I think this is really, this path is really all about relationships. Um, so it's uh, quite an undoing for someone who really enjoyed being by herself, doing things her way. And uh, but when the call came in, we find ourselves in relationships with each other. And that's where the greatest healing has really been and the greatest joy and the greatest miracles, as in like cry every day kind of miracles. <laughs> yeah, even Dan and I coming together when we were first told this was going to happen, that this was what Spirit wanted us to do next. We really experienced so much healing just coming together. And we've been living together in residency for eight months. We were even at the mystery school together. But this next step for us, actually, which was guided by the elders in prayer, has really brought up even more healing for us. And it's been incredibly profound. And, you know, we invite you here to be with us as we go through it. Because what we have, you have. You know, it's, it's for everyone. So we, we share our hearts, we share our healing, as our elders have done with us. So we share with you, just ordinary people. So Dan, share a little bit about your parable with uh -huh. us. How do you find yourself here at Living Miracles, living this life? Uh, a couple of nights ago, I went out to dinner with a couple of friends. And um, our friend Laverne shared her parable about how she had the ideal situation. She was a representative of her tribe. She uh, had a wonderful job uh, representing them uh, and meeting senators and, and people that were very interesting. She had a great husband. And she said, it's like I had it all. I had everything I wanted. And yet, it, it just, it didn't, it didn't satisfy me. And actually, that's, that's pretty much my story, too. Um, I mean, I knew that I was being called from when I was a little kid. I was in a, like a bicycle accident with a car. And uh, uh, someone had said, well, you know, maybe God wants you for a service. Well, that, that sparked something. And I was like, oh, well, that's actually, I was hit pretty emotionally deep. And um, so I went uh, from there through school and always figuring I, at the time I was being raised Catholic. So I figured, oh yeah, I'd become a priest. I actually did join right after high school and was in that for about uh, five or six years. And uh, during that time, I realized hey, there's more here. There's just, there's more. And I'm not getting it all. So I, I left and uh, um, during that time, um, there was a period where I was in prayer consistently every day as you would be in kind of a training situation like that. And at some point though, I maybe have been a, a junior in college, I said, I, I just really, 
I've got kneelers knobs on my legs and I've been praying and praying and yet I want to really feel something. And so um, I was really adamant. And at that point, I did have a, a real, a light experience. I don't know how long it lasted, but, and I don't even remember exactly what happened, but I do know that, that I was out for a while. And when I came back, I was in love with everybody. It was just like something I've never experienced before. And um, I felt like all my questions had been answered except for maybe one. And that question was, why should I love my brother? And I couldn't figure out why I didn't get that answer when it seemed that everything else had been answered for me. And the feeling of love was just overwhelming. It lasted for months. And um, it wasn't until actually I left that community um, and um, moved out west with what would then be my, my wife. Um, and at some point found a, in the East West Journal, which was a publication that came out back then in 1977, a, 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 the book, um, A Course in Miracles. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And it was just one of those things where you knew it pulled you and you just knew that this was significant. So from there, you know, I studied the course, and, but I wasn't fully committed. You know, I wasn't like, I'd studied it for a long time. How long? I was into it for about 38 years. Wow. And so, um, and I realized having gone through it a number of times, it's not necessary to do that. And, and but I was like, in, in my life was, I wanted an adventure, and that's what I got. Um, I, I did a lot of different things and, and it was very entertaining, but it was like my friend Laverne's story. It just really wasn't enough. And then um, at some point I, I heard David Hoffmeister being interviewed on uh, boot at the gas pump or gas tank. And I was like, hmm, this guy's got it. So I call, well, I emailed and he emailed me the next day and said, I'm going to be in Sedona, which is where I lived at the time. And I'll be in there in 10 days. And so I, I attended that three day retreat with, with him and, and Lisa and uh, Jason Warwick. And at the end of that retreat and during it, I felt my heart open. And it was obvious that um, this was what I had been looking for. And it took me a little while after that, a couple of years after that, before I was really ready, I could tell. And when I, when I just went to the mystery school um, last May, and it was at that point that I realized, yeah, this, I've got to go. I've got to go. This is, this is a call that's been there my whole life. And now I'm ready. And so, How's the question going? That's Did it get I, answered? Oh, the question, yeah. Yeah, it got answered, um, and it's being answered. It's, it's kind of the undoing of the, um, the concept of the person. And um, it's, it's, it's powerful, and it's beautiful, and I'm surrounded by people who are totally dedicated and, um, and supportive. And it's such a blessing, such a gift. And, um, and then this opportunity here to share with all of you is spectacular. And um, it's, it's, it's just such a gift to that prayer. Did you teach the course a lot too? Did you? I, I facilitated the course, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it was there was a lot of book learning and we shared all that and it was helpful. And then I also did uh, an unwind your mind um, facilitated that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I recognized some of the people up there and um, <laughs> hi Francis. Hi John. Hi Jerry. <laughs> and uh, so it was really, it was really beautiful. And I realized from that experience that 
that this was it it was the spirit was working through me and i could feel it and i was uplifted even on days when i was thinking yeah i'm not really sure if i really want to do this today and at the end it was like wow i was so high and it was it was great so what is a miracle for you dan how do you define a miracle well i'll a- i'll answer that and then i'm going to ask you the same thing <laughs> okay um <laughs> For me, a miracle is a shift in awareness, uh, a, 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 a movement from a believing that the world is out there to one where I realize this is my projection and I am, I'm, I'm putting this what's seemingly out there. And that took a while because the, the metaphor of, of the projector on the screen is kind of two dimensional. This is three dimensional, which is just showing us how much power we have because we're making this, we're, we're, we're making this moment by moment. And the, the infinite power that the Father gave us when he created us is obvious in what we're seeing and experiencing now. Mm. (sighs) So, Mm. so as we go from being rather two dimensional into at least a three dimensional and finally an infinite perspective, um, the miracle moves into something even greater into revelation and the knowledge and and that's that's what i'm here for your turn (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) what is a miracle to you I'm usually good with words. I can't even find words right now. Um, you always ask me how I feel. How do you feel? That's not helpful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is not helpful right now. <laughs> um, just incredibly grateful. Incredibly in love incredibly humbled, incredibly vulnerable, for me a miracle is just really experiencing that, this love, this incredible feeling of being in love. We were both at the mystery school together. Yeah. That was a lot of healing. That was a lot of healing. Yeah. Yeah, I think. So that's what a miracle is for me. Um, uh, how did I find myself here? Mm. Disappearance of the universe, Ken Wapnick, two sessions of a study group, hearing the name David Hoffmeister, and really immediately feeling this incredible safety that I had never, ever felt before. I didn't know until that moment how fearful I was, how defensive I was. I didn't even have my real name on Facebook. I didn't even have a real picture on Facebook. But the very, very first miracle when I went to the Peace House was... um, in that short weekend from a Friday to a Sunday, I 
put my real name on Facebook. My girlfriend almost had a heart attack. She texted me, it's your real name. I go, yeah, I know how that happened. Hmm. Yeah, the miracles have been this kind of gentle opening into safety, trust. And uh, from then, actually, after that first weekend at the Peace House, <laughs> that Monday, I told my boss's boss, after 23 years in the same job, I'm leaving my work. It was actually the easiest decision I ever made, which apparently I didn't make it. So, And um, yeah, I was an accountant and um, had done all kinds of spiritual paths. I've studied Hinduism and Buddhism and all the different esoteric things of the world, numerology, astrology, all of that, crystals, all of it I studied as a defense, actually. And I didn't know that when I was studying, it was as a defense. It was a defense to separate myself from others. So... And my plan, actually, my big plan was to join an ashram in India. Mm. <laughs> this was not the plan. Mm. But um, I'm glad that didn't work out. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that plan. It just wasn't, I guess, spirit's plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... So, yeah. so how do you how do you relate the what's the uh, kind of like the, the the common denominators between the miracles that we're experiencing and and those that are being felt by everyone at home? I mean, I, I realized that there were miracles in my life I didn't recognize. Oh, yes. And not until I started. I started seeing the effects yes. and um, and here, you know, realizing that I'm surrounded by miracle workers, Yes. you know, and that every time we get together, every time there's a, a, a movie session or, or a sharing, it, it, it shifts me. Yes. And I can feel that, that, Leaving the personal to going to the toward the abstract light, mm -hmm. yeah, and it it it's it's a big change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you? I remember when we were talking about what we might discuss. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that perhaps there be some uh, there be there's a common factor that we're all sharing mm. that you wanted to kind of bring into this experience i don't remember that no <laughs> we, we've joined so much actually you know and every time we join it's truthfully I, i've been saying to everyone and dan here's this if the show never happened our healing has been so profound that it doesn't even matter. And I think that's the thing about this community is to really, the form is always just the backdrop. They tell us that because really our relationships with each other is what's given so we can uncover all these self-concepts that we, we hold so dearly. They're so painful, but we hold so dearly. And um, when we truly join with who we're given in function or as our link, is in somebody that supports our mind training. Yeah, it, the form is just there to allow that spaciousness for our mind to be washed of what we thought was real or valuable or meaningful. Um, yeah, it just starts to show up. So I think, you know, by all of you joining us here, I do feel that that's what we're doing. 
Yeah, it's the joining. It's the joining, yeah. Yeah, part yeah. of the part of the exercises that we that we experience in community um, really have to do with the the projects that we participate in that we collaborate in, and then realizing that it's not the work per se. It's really about watching the mind, because the ego wants to wants to take maybe anything that that we find um, doesn't I, I may not be in the mood today to do something mow the lawn or whatever and what is it that 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 brings up and beneath all that that emotion and 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 beliefs and there are there's a desire for something more than everything and that's something i didn't get when i was doing the course by myself Mm-hmm. Not until I really got into this, this um, started listening to David and, and um, Jason and Lisa and everyone who talked about it. It wasn't until I started realizing that uh, once I could pinpoint, once I could find out what's beneath all of that, using Spiri is a really good way to do it. Mm-hmm. Once I got to that point um, and... I could, I could see it. Then I could turn it over to spirit for the healing because I'm not healing it. All I'm doing is exposing it. I'm, I'm being willing to allow Holy Spirit to take it. And, mm-hmm. and I've experienced some miracles that way. I mean, I think, I think probably one of the biggest ones for me, I was in a marriage relationship for, well, almost 48 years. Mm-hmm. And so when we decided that our paths weren't the same and, and I joined community, um, we divorced and, and I had felt like a, a feeling of, of, you can imagine, for after all that time, I, I really had a, 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 like a connection, a self-identity with, with my ex-wife. And it took a long time for that to wash Mm. um, for me. But at some point, I said to the Holy Spirit, I I woke up one morning and I was feeling that again. I went, I just can't take this. I said, I I don't want it. And I know I made it. I I made this concept, this idea of that connection. And so it's up to me to at least offer to have it unmade. And so it was at that point, I just prayed for spirit to take it. Mm. And it happened Mm. overnight. Mm. That for me was a very clear answer to my prayer. So that's just one of many. So, um, yeah. Yeah, for me, I think um, the most challenging, um, most challenging thing for my self concept was actually uh, undoing the doer, which is really, I was so focused on doing things in order to prove my worth. And I didn't even really realize that that, that was there because I was so used to doing things to prove my worth you know, whether it was at a job or as a daughter or as a sister or as a citizen of the country I was living in. But all my worth, my self-worth was really based on showing that I could contribute something in form, of course. Um, And if I couldn't, I was, in my mind, I was very, very harsh with myself. I got to see that eventually as I continued in the weeks of living in community, how violent the thoughts were in my mind, how judgmental the thoughts were in my mind about what I should be doing, when I should be doing it, how I should be doing it. There was a lot of, a lot of washing about that, a lot of forgiveness, and really in the mind watching, seeing that it wasn't somebody outside of me that was doing what I thought was happening. It was all truly in my mind. And... Um, yeah, so that 
it took a while to get there because, you know, I've heard it before, you know, undo the doer, but the actual experience of watching how my mind thinks when it's doing something or why I'm even doing anything, it was so easy to fall into, I got to get this done. It should be done this way. And when it isn't, uh, yes, and I really got to witness how the ego mind was working itself into, into the spirit given function. And yeah, which wasn't the intention at all. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's the same experience I had. I'm, I'm a doer. I had my own business for a long time. I was used to getting it done. And my link, Ken, who's coming up next show here, actually is is very helpful with that because he's going it's not what we're doing it's joining with me and i i don't know how many times i've heard that and it's it's always amazing to me when i go ahead and do something and then i hop into the next thing without joining with him mm -hmm. because it's that it's that connection it's that the joining that we're doing right now mm -hmm. that makes all the difference because the belief in separation goes deep mm. and it's what we're undoing. And this is a very practical way of, of experiencing that. That's so true. Actually, yeah, I was an accountant and I don't like taxes or tax forms, but it was really, I think one of my most memorable miracles is really, I had to do a tax form with one of our fellow residents, Susan Hutzelak, and I can't believe how excited I was to do this tax form. It wasn't about the tax form. I was going to get to join with Susan, and I love Susan. So all of a sudden, the idea about a tax form didn't even matter. I was so happy to be with her because it was just about joining with Susan. And um, it's the same thing with Nation Builder. I am not good with technology, but it was spirit given that I was going to be joined with Kristen Marco, and oh my word. <laughs> the things that are coming in that I'm learning and just a joy, just the joy of being with Kristen, doing something that, you know, it looks like events. It looks like writing email blasts, but it's really just being joined with her in this function and sharing the message. It's so glorious and so beautiful. And I get to be vulnerable with her every time something's coming up or it's just, yeah, that's what it's all about always. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's powerful day to day, and and we're very happy to be here. And this show is really about hearing the miracle stories and sharing them with you mm -hmm. uh, of those who with whom we live mm -hmm. and um, share this life experience and get to share this with the world. Um, yeah, yeah, this is powerful and yeah. it's really the answer to a yeah, prayer we'll be we'll be interviewing residents and sharing what their lives are like and why i like look at them and like start crying because it's just so beautiful to see the devotion in them which obviously the fact that you're watching this you have it too because you wouldn't even be tuned into this if any of you didn't feel this as well so yeah we're gonna share each and every one of our residents and elders that are here, what their lives are like. And I just have a reason to just fall in love with them more, just like you guys would. And you get to experience it yourself with me as we're joined hmm. in this. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did we have some time for any questions? Yeah, we're, we're good. If, if anyone has anything that they'd like to ask us. I see Adriana. Hi, Adriana. <laughs> Hi, Nicolene. Oh, Jerry. Oh, bless you. Hi, Astrid. Hi, Renee. Renee. John. Chris. Gerald. Oh, I love you guys. Wow. Thank you. Mm. 
Actually, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Yeah, I had a question for you guys, for Marie and Dan, because um, it was just like maybe two or three weeks ago that this new direction for these online shows came in. And Dan, I don't think I've ever seen you so lit up <laughs> and <laughs> just so inspired. And Marie as well, like you guys just ended up in this really unlikely pair. And I just would love to hear about your experience with like these last three weeks and the online shows coming in and what are we going to do and like how it's been for you. Well, it was a big surprise because <laughs> um, we, we were like, well, what are we going to talk about? And, and I had the idea and you, I don't think you were at the, you were somewhere else at the moment, but we had this expression session kind of. And so I thought, wow, I, I, we had had a retreat and people came and really it was, we were so all so happy to be able to extend and serve and help. And when people were so appreciative and, and there was such a deep connection, um, it, it changed things and it, it kind of changed the direction of, of our like mind training and, and everything else involved in that to where we would be expressing more. And so I thought, wow, I'd love to really interview those with whom we live and share that and with, with everyone because there were, there were so many questions. People were so curious, you know, because this is a common experience among us all. And so, slight variations how does it work and so i thought oh yeah well maybe i'll just do a show where i would interview and then you had the same you had the same thought and so we decided to collaborate yes i i will admit <laughs> i started off with me very unwillingly i yeah i yeah that's where the healing began was because i could tell that our dynamics, I could be so um, overbearing. That was my judgment, or so talkative. Or, and I was terrified to have that part of me that I didn't like, that I thought I don't want that part to show up because I could tell that the dynamics between Dan and I, Dan is more quiet and I'm more outspoken. So I was really, really shaking. The first night we joined for what we were going to do, I was literally shaking in my mind like, I, I don't know. Spirit, show me. I was praying, show me what to do here because, I, and, I, and I, I shared it with Dan that night. We were in the bunk room and I shared and I said, I, I don't want to fall back into the old personality self, Dan. And he said, okay, so here's another confession. <laughs> Who we were married to is exactly the personality type that we are <laughs> right now so spirit there's no accident there's no accidents um mm -hmm. and so yeah so it was very confronting for me because i did not want to fall into that pattern again and so it really took a lot of prayer a lot of mindfulness and coming together and i could tell our first video together i was separating from Dan in my mind I could see it so even just watching that and being prayerful like I couldn't even see it until that happened and it's so subtle I could tell it's so subtle but I am grateful that it's here because all my judgments about what men should do and women should do what I should be how he should be all of that came up all of it all of it. Yeah, and I knew I was amazed that she was kind of shy, and I was like, "You're kidding me!" I thought I wouldn't get a word in edgewise, really. And um, <laughs> it's just the opposite. And so, um, yeah, it was really—it's been a great collaboration, and it just feels very, very natural. Yeah, even the first photograph that we took, Dan was saying, okay, it's time to take a photograph now. And my mind was like, oh, no. I go, I don't want a picture of us, but I could tell he was being guided. So literally, our banner was the first photograph he took in the garden 
at La Casa, I was shocked. I was like, Lord, it's really given. Look at that thing. And it's been that way. This thing has been coasting along and I'm just like this. <laughs> and it's just moving forward. And I'm like, okay, healing, healing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been the journey. It continues to be, you know, that, yeah, Kristen, Kristen Buxton is saying, you know, what's guided is provided. So this is guided because everything is being provided. Whole tech team, computers, the screen, all these elders, David here, and you, my mighty companion. Mm. Wow. Just so I could heal the mind. And we're all healing together. Just so you know, <laughs> it's not yeah. alone. My miracle is your miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. My computer's a bit unresponsive, so. You tell Jabber I can tell you to look at it. Oh, it's good. Okay. You can tell your job. Hi. Barely hear you in the background there. Um, <clears throat> so, I had to ask you guys. Now, I know both you guys. One of you I know really well. <laughs> Dan and I grew up together. Um, Marie and I were at the Tabula Rasa together, and the three of us built a, a deck together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we, Dan and I have had this conversation a few times, and I know the reason why all of us that are online are here. Well, no, I assume. And it's that we're all trying to figure out how to be a part of this community. And not all of us can are in the position or maybe are ready to do it physically at this point. Um, First off, I want to thank you guys for doing this, because this is great. And that's everybody who's collaborated on this. This is awesome. Um, the other part, the question is, how do we continue to bring our, our desire for awakening into fruition, even if we aren't physically there with you guys? But what are a couple of ways? I mean, I know we can join some of these things. But is there anything else that's occurred to you guys or any other uh, suggestion or advice that you have, how we can just keep on with the growth? Well, I know that um, a number of others have asked the same question. And, you know, what, what's being offered right now are um, retreats every month, online retreats. Um, there is the, the Strawberry Festival, which is coming up. Um, there's a, another um, venture. A lot of them are actually on uh, Living Miracles Virtual, Ellen Virtual, and th they're listed on, on the calendar as to what's being offered. Um, Spreaker, all of these things, I, that's what I did for years, really after I understood that this, this was the call that I was definitely going to answer. I just wasn't ready at the moment. And um, I would tune in to Spreaker every day, every day, and, and hear something David had just recorded or something that had been on in the past that I was able to listen to. And every time it shifted me, it constantly would shift me. And then the unwind your mind sessions that I did. Um, I just, it was, it was constant, even though I was still involved in my doing my, my business, you know, it, it, it was, it was my lifeline for me. It just, until I finally was done, I just, I couldn't, you know, couldn't take the, the other life anymore. There wasn't, it just wasn't enough. I think, um, for me, what I, what I can hear for myself or for here at this moment is that volunteering from home is really so helpful 
I think because then you're really tuning into everyone in a way and delivering the message by transcribing things or I'm not really that familiar about all the different volunteer from home programs, but because in this community, it's really just being in function and keeping and watching the mind while being in function. When you join in that manner with us, you're really with us in mind because that's all we do. You know, we may be cooking, we may be cleaning, doing the gardening, but it's just really being joined in the mind about what is this for? You know, it's for me to understand there's no Marie, really, there's no Marie. I want to believe there's a Marie, but there's no Marie here. So in the service, in the devotional service, in the selfless service, you're joined with us, John. MMT, that's a wonderful. The MMT thing you had mentioned, John, at one point, that's, that's one of the most powerful tools there is. Um, and of course, um, Spiri, uh, all of these tools that are available. So, um, yeah, and I, it's, it's a prayer, you know, because we are joined. We are joined. This is all coming from the mind. Yeah. Well, I love you guys. Love you too, John. Thank you. Thank you. And we were getting the, the signal that it's time to go. So we want to thank everybody for coming. Yes. Um, join us again yes. next week. And uh, this has been awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, everyone. You're